Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan, and in today's video we'll go over some advanced typography in Blender 2.91. You can download the finished project file on my Gumroad for free, and with that said, let's get straight into the video. Oh, and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing, because I upload a new video every Saturday. For scenes like this, I personally always like to start with the lighting and the overall scene, just because when we preview our materials, it will look a lot better and not so discouraging. So. Let's firstly delete everything and add in a ground plane. We can scale this one up by a bit. Now let's add in our basic text. There are a few things I want to change. So let's go into the text settings. And first of all, let's select center on both the horizontal and vertical alignment. For the materials to work, I want to extrude the text by about 0.15. Now there is a problem, which is that the text is half in the ground. We can easily change this by just moving it up. But if you want to change the extrusion, you will have to move the text again. So let's just copy the extrusion as a new driver and in the end panel, under transform, paste it as a driver in the Z location. Now we can just extrude it and the text will stick to the ground. Great. Now let's add in our camera and a basic HDRI. For the scene, I will place the camera in about this location and change it to orthographic. This gave the text a much cooler look. The HDRI will just be a simple one from HDRI Haven. For example, this one, which includes a clouded sky. This will give us nice overall lighting. So let's switch over to cycles and have a look at our scene. And it's starting to look really good. Now we can start with our materials. I will send this image from a friend of mine as inspiration. So let's try and replicate this. First of all, we need to create these bands. So let's switch to the material preview mode and give our text a new material. Let's now add in a texture coordinate node and choose generated. By now using the separate XYZ node, we can use the Z coordinate to get a gradient on the Z axis. Just for preview purposes, we can use a color ramp to make it more visible. Later, we'll be using a map range node to remap the gradient and the color ramp to create the bandings. So let's first worry about the color ramp. Let's create four more steps and set the color ramp to constant. This will now give us five bands with different lightness values. To make them even, we can go under tools and choose distribute stops evenly. Now let's choose a map range node and use the first two sliders to remap our values. They don't have to be perfect, just align them by eye. And just like this, we have our final layout. Now we need to somehow colorize each step. How can we do this? Well, you could for one just adjust the color ramp right here. But later I want to be able to control the whole scene with just one RGB node. This means for me that if I choose this color, every other color will adapt to it, as well as the ground. Now, how do we do this? Well, we can easily separate each step individually. We can do this by just adding in a math node and choosing greater than. You can now see that we can select each step, but right now we are selecting every step from the top. To fix this, we can just duplicate this greater than node and adjust the value to one less. And after that, just subtract it from the first math node. And just like this, we have separated one step. Now we can just select them and with shift Control D, duplicate them and adjust the values until you have every step selected. And once you're finished, it should look like this, where the first node is our first step, and now every subtract node separates one band. Now we can use the mix RGB node to mix black with a color of our liking, just like this. And now with another mix node, we can mix both of these together with a factor of one, choose add, and we have our bands colorized. And now we can easily adjust these colors with an RGB value node. To create a difference between the first and the second step, we'll be using a brightness and contrast node. And for me, I'll lower the brightness by 0.2. And now we can just continue doing this for each band on our text. The final node group will look something like this. And I just fed the last color output into a principal PSTF with some custom parameters. For example, I chose to use clear code on my text just to make it more interesting. And you might have already noticed that instead of our RGB node, there's now a node group. This is because this node group just includes our color, but I was able to also feed the color into the material of our ground. Now, if I adjust the color in this node group, 
the ground will also adapt. So this is our final material setup. But in the animation you saw in the beginning, the scene included a loop, which this little yellow animated text made clear. So to end off this video, let's also quickly add this one. For this I will just duplicate the text and delete the driver. Now let's Alt-G it back into place and set extrude to zero. I will be using a fill mode of none and a depth of 0 0.005. Let's also delete the material, add in a new one and just give it an emission shader. I want the emission color to slightly adapt to our overall color. So I'll be again using this node group and connect it. And this time with a hue saturation and a value node slightly adjust the hue to a color we like. If we now drastically change this color, this glowing text will also change. Of course, we have to turn the emission way up to maybe 25. And this looks good. We now can just animate it going upwards. So let's go to frame one and move it below our ground. Give it a location keyframe and move, for example, to frame 30 and move it up just like this. I will also, with T, change the interpolation mode to linear. Awesome, now the text just moves upwards. But I want this text to fade out at the end. How do we do this? Well, we can again use a texture coordinate node, as well as a separate XYZ node to create a gradient from top to bottom. And in the end, the text will fade out where there's black. These right here were the final values. I didn't use a color ramp, but a map range node and because of this I had to invert it at the start. I also adjusted the strength so it doesn't fade out that abruptly and used a multiply node to adjust the strength of this adjustment. Now in the end I made it loopable by having two instances of this text at the same time in the scene just so the loop is really noticed as a loop and not just as a cut. This would happen if I would just have it fade out and cut in again at the bottom. But you don't have to do all of this by yourself, because you can just download this scene on my Gumroad. The link to this is in the video description. And this is basically it. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you learned something, consider liking and subscribing. And we'll be seeing us in the next video, next Saturday.